So welcome to Rouse High School. Uh, we're glad that you came out this evening um, to join us as we have a conversation about right away and what we're hoping will be a relatively smooth start to the school year as we navigate getting in and out um, on right away. So we're going to spend the evening just making sure that everybody understands where we are with the project and what the plans are as we go forward and then we'll have time for questions as well. Um, and so we have a relatively small group. We should be able to get to everybody's questions no problem tonight. Um, I want to acknowledge the fact that we have a lot of entities coming together tonight and that's always a good thing. So uh, we have City of Leander folks here, we have Leander ISD folks here, we have CTRMA here. Um, from the City of Leander, of course, we have police and fire and uh, engineers and city council. We have our board member, uh, Vice President Anna Smith here from Leander ISD. Um, and the others will be introduced um, by Todd here in just a second. But thank you for coming out. Um, we've had a lot of conversation about how to make this work the very best way that we can. We do acknowledge that it is going to be difficult as we go forward. Um, and so we're asking for grace and patience um, and kindness as we go forward, um, as we try to navigate what is potentially unknown to us. So we haven't done it this way before. Um, so we're going to learn a lot as the first day progresses, and then we'll potentially have to make some adjustments as we go. So we're going to do the very best that we can. Um, the goal tonight is to make sure that you understand the information, exactly what we're doing, um, and then be able to clear up any questions that you have. We are filming tonight, so we'll post that, I think, tomorrow morning. Um, so you'll have, be able to share that as well. We do have lots of information on our website, the city has lots of information on their website, um, and we're also available to answer any questions that you have as we get closer and go. Alright, so with that, we're going to get on with the evening, so I'd like to introduce Todd Parton, the uh, city manager for the Leander. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gary. Um, again, I'd like to echo uh, Todd's comments about the doctor's uh, welcome, and I'm pretty sure by taking the time to be here with us this evening, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, some important city leadership uh, that we have here with us, uh, Mayor Christine Kubala. Mayor Pro Tem uh, Nicole Thompson. Councilor David McDonald. We also have some staff leadership with us here this evening. Uh, I'd like to introduce them. Uh, Police Chief Greg Benton, I think, is here. Uh, Police Fire Chief of Billy uh, Wisterhausen. Our Executive Director of Public Works, Jane Nelson. Our Assistant Public Works Director, Mike Riley. Um, our CIP Manager, Tony Metis, who you'll hear from a little while. Executive Director of Development Services, Robin Griffin. And very important person, Tony, our communications manager. I think one of the things that's important is when you look at the project and you drive down right away, it looks like a standard construction project. And you look at it and say, why in the world is this taking so long? Why is it going on two years of construction? The reality is it's a very complex project. It addresses a lot of different things that, that all come together in our body in one seventeen million dollar capital project. It's a drainage project. It's a pedestrian safety project. In addition to a transportation project that is intended to try to address the development impacts that they're growing that way. We are very sensitive to as a city and we appreciate the impacts that it's had on everyone's lives, their quality of life, the things that are there the things that are impacting our students as they're trying to get to, to school and do their business and do the things that they need to do. So we're very sensitive to that, and, and we hate that we have to go through this process, but when we get to the end, we will have a successful project that will create the capacity that will greatly improve the, the congestion and the issues that we've had in this area for uh, quite a few number of years. Um, tonight, when we discuss a couple things we'd like to really kind of highlight are how we got here. So what led up to doing the project, 
why did we take this particular time to do this project? And then, and then where are we in this process? What can you expect in terms of timeline and impact moving forward? And beyond that, we have to think about what happens when we get two lanes or three lanes back open here. How are we going to manage traffic when we get to a more finished project? So we've got an interim phase and then a final phase that will happen that will give you this. Um, again, Dr. Gary had alluded to a project team, and it's we do have a very engaged project team that has included the city, uh, LISD, and CTRMA, who is there managing the regional uh, 183A and the traffic signals and those types of things. We are at the beginning of what we need to do this year. We're going to continue to monitor, monitor, and to discuss. What we're doing, how we're doing it, is it having the impacts that we need, or the things that we can do as we live through this process that can make it work better and function better. So again, we'll have continuous active engagement and continuing conversation. So that concludes my comments, and I'll like to turn to our deputy superintendent, Sarah Grissom. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sarah Grissom, I have the honor of serving as Deputy Superintendent, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about structure for our meeting tonight. Um, there's a lot of information that is going to be shared, and so um, we first have a presentation from the city to talk about the project, so Mr. Bettis will be up here. Um, you will see sticky notes and pens on your table because there are going to be questions that come up. And so we're just asking you to capture those so you don't forget them as we're going through. But we want to make sure we give you all of the information. Because after you hear from Tony and team, then you're going to hear from our campus principals at Rouse and Wiley, who are going to talk about the mitigation plans for when we're on site and how we're ensuring that we're getting students safely to and from school. So we're going to go through all of that information. So just capture your questions as they come up. And then we'll get to the Q&A part. And you'll see we actually have a podium right over here to put a structure to the Q&A part. And we'll just have you line up. There's a microphone there. You'll be able to ask your question or two, maybe you have a couple. And, um, and then we'll just cycle through all of those questions. Um, we're here as long as we need to be. Um, once we get through that Q&A part, we'll wrap up, but then we will all still be standing around if there's some individual conversations that you just want to have with us as well. Okay, so just wanted to give an overview of what you can expect tonight. And as um, Dr. Gearing said, this is being recorded. We are going to push that out through, um, through our communication team to make sure that that's public for everyone um, to see. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Bettis. Thank you so very much. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so very much for coming. Uh, my name is Tony Bettis. Please do not be confused with Tony Bennett. <laughs> um, and I've got a great way to have spent an hour around having to talk about this. I promise I'll be back to y'all. Uh, we'll keep it short. So we're going to go ahead and explain and bring you on kind of updated here to where we are, where we're going, and hopefully be able to answer some questions. So the purpose is to think about this. Everybody out there everybody remembers kind of the kind of how tiny it was, how uh, inadequate it was. So our purpose here is to improve stormwater detention as well as stormwater management, pedestrian safety, traffic safety, and we take a team of people flow through the railway and for the drop area. So before construction, January 271 was a simple two-lane rural road with a little stop right here at Woodview. After construction, we're anticipating having a three-lane collecting road with a roundabout, sidewalks, crosswalks, bike lanes, street lighting, gutter systems, storm sewers, and detention facilities. So if everybody remembers what that looked like, and good that has gone, we're working diligently to try to get you something much better. So if you can see here, this is the original profile of that road. You have a 24, 24 foot wide road, it's basically 12 foot length on each, with open uh, drain channels on each side. Not really good, I don't know if everybody remembers how we used to flood Crystal Falls. So this is what we're trying to work towards. And then we're going to make sure we're building toward our 20 foot tall parking center there. But what we're anticipating having is a 70 foot road with 55 foot back and curve, back and curve. Uh, road system there. 
So it's three lanes to let the road, so we're trying to lane, two lanes, and then very nice out of the black lanes. Road and Lord, sidewalks on the side with uh, our landscaping of the change. So let's think back. I don't know if everybody remembers what's being kind of a simple or it's just what we want. Really that what was happening here was a couple houses and a church. Then by 2016, or I should say around 2006, 2008, we had the schools constructed. By 2016, we had the church crossing and the church, not church. By 2018, 2019, we had our bell. And things grew really quick, really fast. And here we are more or less today in 2023. So what does that look like on the timeline? On the growth. Well, back in middle school, white animals were coming in. They brought 800 plus students. In 2007, and they had 183 front row was built. In 2008, when outside school came in, they brought in about 1,900 students. So you can see we're very starting to grow up our traffic pattern really fast. 2011, Crystal Falls Park was widened. By 2012, we had this old 183 phase one. By 2014, so we were crossing the neighborhood, it was platted for 223 homes. People were already moving in by 2016. By 2016, we had a city bond election saying it's time to really resolve this situation for a way away. So by 2016, we hired our design team and we started the project design. By 2017, the uh, Crystal Falls Park apartments, I'm sorry, apartments are constructed. Don't really have any homes, right there, if you can see that. Uh, 2021, our building neighborhood is pretty much. And then by 2023, we had to start construction. So last summer, until I finished, we hired a higher kind of contractor, and we got right to construction. So this is, as, as others have said, this is a very, very um, complex project. I think it's the best term for it. There's a lot going on, and it really involves a lot of people on a much larger team. Um, as I heard before, so it takes a village. Um, so what we have in the room, we have over a dozen entities here, uh, agencies, organizations, and corporations, all working together, trying to get us this new road system. So some project considerations were, what is we're thinking about some of the plans of this, how are we going to get entering and exiting traffic going through? How are we going to maintain pedestrian safety? You know, with the virtual right away, we had actually purchased a lot of right away and a lot of easements to actually make this road work. Uh, we have a lot of residential stakeholders. I'm sure some of them are here tonight. Uh, we have school stakeholders. A lot of them are here tonight. And then we have utility stakeholders, who many of whom we have to move really okay. Now we have critical project factors, such as in 2017, we had to add drainage and easements to Bay Run. Uh, we added 183A deceleration lane from 183A onto what you drive. And then we had parking, the church parking lot provisions that we had to conduct. In 2018, right away was widened to match the transportation plan. Uh, we reduced the width of the uh, Woodview Dirt uh, Drive section, not necessarily in the matter, but we had a good way to help control traffic. And we changed the stormwater design. Uh, a lot of us were coming in, and I don't know if you know, Atlas 14 was really impacting since 2018. Atlas 14, for those who don't know, is where Noah, National Ocean Geographic and Administration. They, they go and they review how much water is actually falling in the region at the only point in time. And they continually update that information. So they came back and said, oh, you guys are waiting for So we had to change everything, including adding two more detention ponds. So in 2020, we added new drainage drainage dirt regulations, and then we had to change the pump for more road on the right of emergency. And then, of course, we had the well, COVID and the inflation that followed that, as well as all the uh, scope and increase. So right now, with everything that's going on, it's, it is a very complex project, and it really does require a lot from all of us. We have ongoing coordination with LISD and CTRMA, who have been great partners, and we greatly appreciate everything. We've had to review detour options and establish final routing in terms of LISD's preferences, or make sure that we were handling what's ever best, for both the school and students and the drivers. We're working with CGRA to review our sections and see the following changes. And then we must be very conscientious that we do not impact that track there. And then, of course, city, the city, LISD, and CGRA are constantly trying to receive feedback from the kids' neighborhoods, from the property owners, and from LISD parents and students. So, right now, 
what we have is we're trying to mitigate traffic on big day peak flows that schools are in operation. And of course, our peaks are in the morning from 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. And in the afternoon, it's 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. So what we have right now is we're, as we're moving towards school, we have this flow pattern will be starting tomorrow. This is where we're going to be moving in, coming off of the 183 toll road at Texas Road, going eastward on Road View and then south on Greater right Way. And then, of course, you can split Greater right Way, right, which falls out of your left or right. And with this, actually, I'd like to go back a little bit, I need to point out, and hopefully some of you have seen this, we are going to have a roundabout here at this intersection. Now, roundabouts are a little bit more difficult to construct than you might think. So we have to build them up in courts, or quadrants, as we call them. So far, we have constructed the southwest quadrant. That southwest quadrant helps us maintain traffic as we flow through. We do need to now move forward and construct more of the quadrants, which means we're going to construct the northwest quadrant and the southeast quadrant. So this helps us be able to get to a point where we can mitigate the traffic problems and hopefully get us back to where we can open up to do what you have to see. That being said, what that does is it forces a situation here. It forces us to close off this intersection to everybody coming south and right away. So we are going to, and have requested a detour, coming back down through Sports Crossing, then back down to uh, Woodview, and then down right away. As so we're going to have here, we're going to try to keep this as open and clear as possible. We're asking no traffic, parking on um, uh, County Pruitt, and then coming down the road we're going to have the west side, no parking, and then with regards to Mill Ranch Road, we'll have the parking on the side there. Hopefully, that keeps the traffic flowing as much as possible. Now, before school starts, we have our town room tonight, our town hall tonight. Um, very glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, August 7th, we will have a virtual town hall by 3 p.m. Uh, we do have the connection to that on our website. So hopefully you all know if you need to join us and ask your neighbors to join us too. We really like to have a big turnout, so we want to ask them some questions. We will start the reverse traffic flow to one way east on with you and one way south on right away. First thing in the morning, we're actually going to be out here about 3 to 4 in the morning and changing that over. And we're going to activate the steward crossing detour. That's what the detour just showed you. We are partially restricting on street parking. And then we're going to start the construction of the northwest, northwest and southeast quadrants of the roundabout right away. After school starts, right, school starts on August 14, we are going to continue to monitor and adjust as we get ready to the traffic. We are going to have several officers, all three officers here. Uh, they will be watching for safety reasons and for traffic reasons. And we will hopefully be able to make the adjustment as needed. With the yellow circle that you see there, what we're going to be doing here is coming a week or two, two weeks. If we're actually going to start collecting traffic, we really can't do that until we actually have traffic flowing. Right now, we don't have the traffic, but once we have the actual school traffic, we can collect that data. That data helps us uh, assess and determine how to better respond to that traffic. We will have law enforcement support here to establish visibility of drivers, minimize the emergency response time. And observe driver behaviors. That's important. Uh, Finally, in 2024, we're, we anticipate being back to two way traffic on right away with the removal of that neighborhood detour. So, at that time, it does depend on multiple factors. Now, our contractors are great contractors and are trying to beat that before right now, that's what we're shooting for. And the contractors are working uh, 12 hour days, seven days a week, and sometimes they're working late at night as, as well. So that's what I'm then by February 2025, by the end of February, we estimate we're turning with you to two way traffic right now with you. Now that would mean that by that time we have two way traffic flowing through the whole complete neighborhood. And then by July 25, or 2025, my we estimate reaching substantial completion. And substantial completion means that we will get what's called punch items, or punch That means we still have little things we're still working on on the side, doing a little landscaping, cleaning up all the stuff. So you may still see our construction folks on the site even after July 2025. That doesn't mean that we're not having an anticipated application, we're just going to check out the little details. So, now the fun part. Any questions? Yeah, we're going to hold on there. Oh, hold on. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tony. Okay, so just as a reminder, you're capturing your questions.
questions, writing those down. At this point, I'm going to pull up our amazing principals um, for Rouse and Wiley. Come on, my friends. Uh, so that they can talk about how this is exactly right. Oh my gosh. We talk about rock stars. Um, so I'm going to pull up their presentation and let them talk about how are we planning for all of this? Because um, obviously, this is with school starting next week, there's a lot going on. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Hello, I'm Darla Smith. I'm the principal of Miley Middle School. Vincent Hawkins, principal of Rouse High School. And I'm the talker between the two of us, so he's going to let me present most of the slides and then he'll talk about his maps so when we get to that point. <laughs> or wherever he wants to talk is fine. <clears throat> okay, right away, we also, like the city, we're keeping up a website for the LLMLISD's website, and we have links from our own school websites about updates to right away, updates and communication regarding the right away, maps, all of those things. So first things first, we're going to be communicating to our communities, we've already started some, but there's been a lot of communication just about the traffic flipping overall and some of these meetings. So we're trying to give them just in time information so that they don't want to quit looking at our communications going out. But we're going to encourage families to have their kids ride the bus. We've removed all barriers um, to riding the bus. There's usually a two-mile radius, all of that. None of that will apply. All of our students can get on the bus. We also have a new registration process that we're going to keep continuing to register our kids, but everyone's going to be able to ride the bus as they're being registered. We're encouraging carpooling with friends and neighbors, walking for some folks, Riding bikes, um, we're going to be showing them. I'm planning on doing a video from the west side of right away, showing them where those, the new sidewalk is, where the hops will be, how to access the walking path from Stewart and Mar Stewart Crossing and Marbella. It's very important to me that students are able to get to that nice new sidewalk very safely. Um, we are also looking for crossing guards in those areas to help out get those students across Woodview safely as well. So if you have friends or neighbors, feel free to come to LIC's website and apply. Um, we're also encouraging parents, sometimes our traffic flow in the afternoon, um, it gets bogged down on both campuses. It's not unusual at school campuses that parents want to show up early and wait for their kiddos. We understand that. The issue here is because of the one-way, one-lane traffic, that creates extra problems for overall community um, traffic patterns and their availability to get to where they need to go as well. If we back up on right away, that becomes a problem. So getting here early, if parents want to do that, we're just encouraging them to try to get to the parking lot or to not arrive too early and just when school is out, leave your house, come on by, pick up your kid. But um, when we block all the, the traffic, the ways we can get in and out, of the schools because we're there early and it makes it very difficult and then other cars back up on right away naturally. <clears throat> we're also encouraging parents while they're on our lots to pull forward, close gaps between cars, um, follow the traffic patterns that each of us have set on our campuses based on our unique needs, observe all the signs that are present, our painted, we're both flipping our traffic patterns in our parking lot Big one is paying attention. Um, everyone's going to be a little bit confused trying to get their bearings with the new um, directional traffic on our in our parking lots as well. So pay attention, be kind to staff and volunteers directing traffic is the message we're trying to send out. Tell me when you want this microphone. This. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's doing great. Um, area safety considerations is just please don't drop off children on right away, like on the road. Okay. Um, ask them to actually be on the campuses when you drop off your student. I know you might be in a hurry or late to class. Please understand that our admin team, when it comes to students being tardy or even being absent, we're going to mitigate that. We're going to work with our kids um, just to make sure that, you know, hey, the student is late and, 
You've already talked to our staff. Getting your gear has already happened for our teachers. Um, we're having those conversations with our staff. We had those conversations last year about if a student um, shows up late, um, we're going to work with that kid, okay? Um, just as far as, um, you know, cell phones down, you know, at the high school, my daughter is a senior, she's a teenage driver. Um, we have things on her phone that, that the phone doesn't ring, silence notifications, those types of things to make sure that our teenage drivers and we'll have those conversations with them about please don't be on your cell phone. You shouldn't at any point, but especially on right away to not be on your cell phone so that you're safe coming in and the campus. Um, and we're going to have students who enter and exit um, vehicles on the driver's side with the reverse pattern. So the front of um, Ross High School, the front of Wiley, it's going to be a little different. So your kid might want to ride in the back seat like they're being chauffeured to school now. Um, cool thing. Um, just so that they're getting out on the side and getting onto the campus um, as quickly as possible. And then please don't block entrances uh, to local businesses um, and apartments on the toll. Um, we're going to do our best to mitigate that by making sure that we keep traffic flowing. Um, associate Principal Stratton Brown is here, has a great plan for making sure that we have people out in front of the campus um, to make sure that the traffic is flowing and trying to make sure that you don't have to wait on the road. And so here's some efforts to increase safety. Uh, we're recruiting and hiring four crossing guards. So please, anyone who um, is willing to come in the morning uh, to help with our traffic plan as well as in the afternoon. So we don't need you from 8.15 to 3.40, 3.35. We don't need you all day, right? Just if you know anyone, come and help us in the morning. Uh, we start at 8.15. Darling, you begin. 9.05. At 9.05. Our doors are going to open at 7.30. Wally's doors will open at 7.50. And so if you can just help us out in the morning, and then for us, 3.25, and then for you in the afternoon. Oh, getting out 4.20. At 4.20, right? So it's just kind of you can come and help, and then you can go home, you know, watch TV, whatever you need to do, and then you come back. But we're really wanting to recruit people from the community to help um, with that. And so, um, we're creating a, a pattern to minimize bus traffic on right away. Uh, bus transportation for all zone while and all students, regardless of bus registration status. So basically, we're saying kids get on the bus and come to school. Okay. If we can get as many kids riding the bus as possible, that's great. Now, obviously, at the high school, for kids who are in band, for kids who are in athletics, we've already started, you know, football practice and volleyball practice. Parents have to drop them off, and then in some cases, the kids just have to drive to school because. You know, our football players are out there at 5 o'clock in the morning. But for the other kids who are able to ride the bus, we're really asking for the kids to ride the bus, if at all possible. Um, and so, Wiley has been gracious enough to offer parents who have to get here early. Um, the Wiley lot has a cell phone zone for you to go and just park, and then you can wait and then get back on, you know, um, to um, have your kid walk across or go and pick up your kid if you need a place to just kind of be there. Um, early. And so here's the, uh, we have a, a bit right there. This is an advertisement that we put out there for those um, two crossing guards and four parking lot attendants to help us out. Really, in that morning rush and in that afternoon rush, really those are the two, probably two times that we really need a lot of help. Two times. Um, and so here are the crossing guard locations, two at the intersection of Ray Ray and Crystal Falls. One, we need a steward crossing to detour the, steward, the, um, the students from uh, steward crossing, from Maryville to steward crossing. Because when you're looking at those two neighborhoods, the sidewalk is on the west side, and so we need some help getting them on that west side. And so that's why we need to put someone over there. Um, and then one at each of the hawks that are going to be coming up. Um, and so here's the path. Um, it hasn't been laid down yet, but that's where it's going to be. Chasco is sure that there will be a designated path from right away for them to cross over onto the campus. My turn. I do want to give a little shout out. One of our crossing guards we recruited last year is here tonight. So, Andrew, you don't have to stand up, but you want to wave. I want to thank you for your service. It was not easy for the Crystal Falls and right away intersection. And he is pretty much, I think we have one person there before you, and then he's pretty much been there all year long. That is not easy to do. You can ask any police officer or a teacher or anyone else. And um, but they have done a phenomenal job and really helped our kids be safe. And they've been boots on the ground for things that might change on the fly. So our, our other friends out of the country, we won't talk about that right now because 
<laughs> He's having fun. All right, so this is the general direction of right away going southbound. Our parking lot is a little more simple because we don't have student parking and traffic to have to contend with. So basically we're going to encourage parents, we're reversing our traffic. So the drive that's right between Wiley and Rouse by the tennis courts, and we're going to ask parents that will become the entrance. Then they will come to the front. During the morning there will not be these orange blockades there. They can just drop their children off and go ahead and head out. In the afternoon, there will be no parking in the front drive. If you arrive before 410, you will have to go to a parking place and park. We will stack the parking places and we will start stacking. There's mine, again, mine is designed differently. There's room for parking places, a movement row, and then more parking along a curb area. So we can stack quite a few cars in there. If it starts backing up for any reason, and make sure that we're still keeping cars on the right way. But that's kind of the plan at this time. Um, my teachers are all parking over here in the bus area, and they have opened up this lot for cell phone lot for Ralph, for those who choose to use it, also for additional parking for the parents. Um, the buses will come in and go around and go back out that same way. So parents are only coming in with the buses, but they're not going out with the buses. During, um, we'll be blocking off this so that we can keep our traffic pattern flow going in that direction. We don't have any kind of head on situations. Um, talk about the driver's side. Yes, chauffeur your children. Let them ride in the back right behind you. It'll be fun. Okay, so, um, and so there's one, and so here's Ross. Um, this is the front of our school if you're looking at it, and in the front of the parking lot is where we call our three quarter day students park. So a kid, like my daughter, she's off for a good period, she'll come and she'll park in the front, as well as all of our staff. And so um, if you were a parent you were here last year, we're heading northbound, this was the entrance into the school, and that was the exit out of the school, and so now it's reversed. We're now, this is the entrance into the school, and then that is the exit, okay? And so, like Darla was mentioning, um, in front of Rouse, all of the parking spaces are angled, and so if we open this right here, you're actually going, you're going the wrong way. And so, that's why we block off that area um, for when parents are coming in um, to drop off their kids in the AM. And so these, this right here, this road coming around is pretty wide. It actually allows for three lanes of cars to come through. Um, Mr. Brown's added, you'd only have one assistant principal out in the front. We have um, a teacher out in the front. We've added personnel. We'll have two assistant principals out front. We'll have additional teachers out front to help um, with the traffic flow here. The good news about um, changing it this way is that this is the main entrance to the campus. And so when we reverse it and go around, it actually creates more room for um, parents to, to come around. But we still ask parents not to show up until 325. Um, last year when I was here, I just, you know, went into the parking lot and was trying to figure out how long it was taking. Once the bell rings at 335, by 355, it's a ghost town. And so we're really going to do a good job on Thursday at Raider Camp of telling our um, middle school parents you know, really, if you get here at 325, you're probably gone by 345. It's actually pretty quick. And so a lot of our buildup really kind of starts at about 245. Um, and so we're really going to try to mitigate that by having them come around, um, parking on the right side of the left side, and then in that middle for a continuous flow. Of course, if they're here really early, you can just keep coming, and then you can just get into your parking space if you need to get into that parking space. And then we can open this up once that flow um, goes for the students. Um, but the good thing about this park right here is the way it was, um, you know, in the past, they were crossing right here, and now there's, there's actually, there's, there's no um, crossing paths right here as they're coming in and out of school. Okay, and so um, this is PM with them coming in, so this is the afternoon. What we've done right here is this is blocked off initially. We want to make sure that we get everyone um, all the way in as, as far as possible. 
possible um, to make sure that we have this continuous flow right here. Last year, I was new here, so I walked out in the parking lot and I knocked on several windows and asked parents, why, why don't you just keep going, you know? And they said, because Hawkins is one lane and then I'm blocked in because if I'm parked then, and so it's like, okay, um, we will mitigate that by having our parking lot person here and saying, hey, listen, we need you to, we need you to move into that. I know it's one lane, but we don't want to back up one right away. But initially, we really believe that having these two lanes here, this continuous flow, um, and then hopefully people showing up in 325 will mitigate that, but we are prepared, if necessary, to open that middle lane up, if necessary, even though um, it's, it's one lane and, and it gets pretty tight going in those lanes right there. And so this right here um, really isn't new. Um, you know, we have different events that happen, and we had um, middle school dance that showed up, parents from lots of different places in the area, um, lots of people, and so they were going, they went to the bad science lot, and then um, we mitigated that by having them drop off the middle school dance kids over here that actually worked pretty well. Um, and so this is where we have our athletic drop-off zone, and I'll explain a little bit more why we kind of pick this area in a minute. If you'll see, this is our science day right here. This is where y'all came in, right? So parents coming in at a.m. We talk about a.m. We're talking five o'clock in the morning. Like literally, that's when our parents drop our kids off. Um, they're here extremely early. One of the things that um, you know we talked about was this being a one way is that there is going to take some kindness and some courtesy. When I'm trying to take a left, and you're trying to take a left into the parking lot, um, of making sure that we um, understand the traffic flow going that way. Um, but the reality is, the only place um, to come in and out for our students is right here. And then there's a further place down closer to Wiley that you'll see in a minute, where those places, is, you're, you have to go left, everyone's gonna have to cross. And so I'll explain that in a minute when you see how our bus is flowing. But this is our athletic drop off. This is where our students park, and this is where the staff park. So if you're kind of wondering where do students and staff park, we ask all of our students to park right here, and all of our staff to park over there. Um, and so what's not on here, and I don't know if we got to it, okay. What's not on here is, so for our buses, we have our back road for our buses. That's a two-way lane in the back for our buses to come in, for our buses to come out. And so for construction, um, as we understand, this area of the band pass can be blocked off. So this is no longer an entrance and an exit over here. So when the buses come, they're gonna come through the back road, our baseball and softball fields, if you ever come, swing around, pick up kids, and then take the same road and come out, okay? Um, that does create some challenges for us because we have staff members, our coaches, and other people, and our auto tech teachers and our fine arts people who are gonna to have to park back here as well, but we're gonna mitigate that. We also have um, our ag barn that is packed there with animals, and so we are working with our families who also are gonna to have to go back there to um, tend to animals. What our admin team anticipates is as soon as people realize that this back area is blocked, we're gonna to have to probably beg people to park over there because it's very far from this exit which is over here. Um, but we're gonna work through that and try to encourage our teachers and our staff members to park back there um, so that we can kind of alleviate some of this pressure back here. And so um, that is our plan right now. But like uh, Tony said, I mean, this is a plan that uh, we work very hard on, but we are open to feedback. And so my senior driver, Alexis, will certainly tell me if she appreciates this plan, right? And so the same is for y'all and your students who are drivers, and you as well, of just letting us know how is it working? Are there any things that, um, that you can help us see that we're not seeing? So, thank you. And this flow of traffic on your, this one isn't technically different, just that you're dropping athletes off, right? Correct, right. This is the same flow for the students, for the staff, and the drop off for the athletes. Now, this isn't where they have to. I mean, if a parent says, um, I want to drop my athlete here, that's fine. It's just, it's a long way to athletics. Um, this is as close as we can get them to athletics and for the parents to get out as fast as they can get out um, in the 
Last slide. All right, a lot of the questions that we've received so far as school employees are how are you going to handle tardies? Vincent talked about that a little bit earlier, but grace, grace is the word of the next several months, right? And so we are going to work with our teachers. If they're running late, we're going to work with our students. Um, we're going to have grace, we understand. So um, a little advice for parents, it's going to be a little bit stressful if you're choosing to drive your kid out of school. Um, just be calm in the car because they feed off of your energy. So we're going to have grades, just smile through it, um, and it'll be okay. But just know that you impact that. Um, how early can you drop them off? We've, uh, we adjusted our window of time of when staff is usually supervising students. We moved it back. I adjusted some staff and some hourly employees their contract time to allow them to be able to supervise students as early as 7.50. This was another um, advantage of this particular traffic pattern drop their students off at Rouse, and then Wiley, and then they could be off right away all together, wouldn't have to make the double loop and all of that. So that helps alleviate it if we have 219 families that we share between the two campuses. So again, the name of the game is to keep as many cars off right away as possible, and so with this one-way situation, so that was one way to, we could help. And so we've made some adjustments for that. Rouse is also allowing our students in earlier, if parents are trying to hit a window that's not quite as congested, they can drop off a little earlier there. And then another question that we get is kind of why school officials aren't out on the right away directing traffic. We're not allowed to do that. So we, that is a public road, that is city of Landers Road, and we are not allowed to do that. So we can't go out there. We can direct it on our campuses, but we can't direct out on the road. So I know we've got questions about that, and I just want to make sure that we cover that information too. <clears throat> All right. That's perfect. That's <laughs> All right. Okay. So now you have the full picture, and I'm sure you've written some questions down. And we're going to open up the floor to questions. So we have a podium right here with a mic ready to go. We have our principals here. Tony's here. There's a lot of staff here to help support. We'll phone friends if we need to. Um, but there's the podium. I'm just open. Y'all can make a move over there. Well, thanks for sharing all that information. I'm Sudhakar, I'm a resident of Marvel, I come here to hear. Uh, I'm just curious, like, what is the walking path for the kids uh, coming out of Marbella, especially if the order walks are closed and construction is happening there? Well, that's a good question. Um, That is where we have a crossing guard station to help cross the students to the west side sidewalk. Here we go. There will be a crossing guard here to help the students cross that location. We have concerns about getting the students anywhere closer to this, and that happens to be the only way to get them there. So we can cross them here, then they're on the sidewalk and safely traveling to the hawk that will get them across right away. So coming out of Marbella, that is a dangerous blind hill right there. And so kids having to cross over right away, that is a big concern too to get them over there. So I think that was kind of parents' questions on that. I assume they'd have to go through Stuart Crossing, but I think now getting them across that right away because people fly down there and up there and it's just a blind hill. So I think that's one of the concerns too. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly the point. So I mean, I think uh, we don't, I mean, one well, it's really long, but like, it's, it's a hill that like, it's bigger than the time right? So. Yes, sir, I understand. This intersection will be closed off 
So we're forcing traffic to turn all this way. Should have no way to fly up this way. Well, hopefully that way we can have students across here, upstream of traffic, traffic can go that way. But yes, I understand. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, the other thing was, like, I think last time that we had this phone call, the plan was to kind of finish the construction before the school opens, right? Can somebody share what happened and, like, uh, who is taking the money for you on that? Yes, very good questions. There were multiple situations that occurred. One of which was that we came across some unforeseen utilities underground, which pushed about four months back, and we had some other coordination concerns with regards to what we call dry utility contract utility vendors. Uh, those who provide us things such as communications and natural gas. We came across what we found an unforeseen or previously unknown utility set up at one time. So those slowed us down as well. So who's taking the contract where you are? So like I said, like, does the contractor get fined for this or like who takes the contract where you No, the contractor does not get fined for this. See the actual one that's been brought for it. Hi, my name is Robin, and I am a resident of Stewart Crossing. I live on Murder Bend, which will be part of the detour. Um, my question is actually, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody from all the various parties who are here tonight. That didn't happen in some of the earliest meetings about right away, and we appreciate that all of you who are important in this process are here to listen to us tonight. So thank you for that. I also want to compliment Chasco. I, I, you can see my house from the parking lot right here. I recognize how hard they're working, how clean they're keeping the work site, and so I just want to acknowledge that. My question is, we know that the west side of Myrna, people will be requested not to park on that side to kind of free up the flow of the traffic on Myrna. I have only seen mention of that on social media. Myrna Bend residents have not received, to my knowledge, any official notification about which side of the street we're requesting to park on. So my question is, what notification method is being utilized um, so that we can be the most effective in, in getting that word out about parking on the side of the street? Yes, ma'am, of course, we understand that. We've tried to use several different methods, one of which is, of course, our website. Not everybody goes to our website. Uh, we've tried reaching out to the HOAs. We've notified the HOAs earlier on. We were hoping the distance that we could even reach more of the uh, residents than we could. Uh, there is the anticipation of traffic, some sort of um, how I can hurt each other for this term. Were we trying to make the mayor or the cab say a. Considering the mayor. I'm sorry? Considering the mayor. Yes, sir. Yes. So we are considering the mayor that goes out as well. I'll add that one of the communication methods that has been super effective up until this point was just notices on our front doors. Um, we got notifications when they were going to be out there really early doing concrete work, and we all know about it because we all got the notice on our front door. So that might be an option too, something that can be handled quickly. Um, my other comment is maybe for the principal of RAS. I feel like student drivers don't always know how to use a roundabout properly. Yes, so maybe by the time that roundabout is done, if there could be some sort of school initiated lesson on how to use a roundabout and how to be courteous to people coming south out of right away out of those neighborhoods to merge into the roundabout would be helpful. Yes, sir, absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, my kids as well. <laughs> it's important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you guys again for being here and for taking on this second job that you guys are doing. We really appreciate it. Um, so, two questions. One is um, the, the construction process on the frontage road. So I know that there's still cones up there and that's where all of the people will be coming into school. Um, are they planning on clearing those cones off or is it just going to be that speeding lane where they're going to stop and turn in? Yes, ma'am. They are going to be doing that first thing in the morning. They do need to clean that up and have make sure that's over. They've been keeping it close because right now we have traffic flowing in this direction. We didn't want people turning into that. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Um, and then the next one is, and I know now that you guys will have a crossing guard right there coming out of Stewart Crossing. Um, the only thing that I would maybe just 
say keep an eye on is the traffic of cars that's coming out of Stewart Crossing because you have all those people going to work in the morning from both neighborhoods um, and how they are going to merge in with the line of cars that will inevitably be sitting on with you. So if you have a crossing guard there, um, I know that they're not allowed to direct the, the traffic, they're only allowed to stop and let the kids cross, but I just am kind of worried about how they're all going to be merging on to with you. Yes, we want to request our contractor to have an off duty officer standing by. Hello, everybody. My name is Larry Roberts, Blockhouse Creek. I came to run off to the junior year, Rouse. And first of all, thank you for everybody to be here in the neighborhood. Finally, ISD, cities, everybody is doing an amazing job. Presentation is very, very helpful. I'm sorry there's a couple more of our neighbors. I'm going to let them come here to attend the schools. Um, a couple of questions, maybe that was answered before, but I don't maybe need a clarification. One of them is about why they drop off lanes. Sorry, Ralph's drop off lanes. Uh, so I understand that we have open three lanes. One is going to be for a through, and the two are on the side. If we're interested to do carpools, and we have a carpool of very uh, Excited students to start the day with parents that have been sitting in traffic maybe for 45 minutes. When they get to the final destination and the off of the cars, it will be a cross guard that helps that traffic, the, the through lanes, not going to have any unfortunate like accidents by people getting off their cars, students rushing, being late, or stressing about being made work class. That's my first concern. Absolutely. So, um, so my kids went to Styles, and so when I thought about it, I thought about Styles and how they they Styles gets there really early, um, but they have the kids get out and they walk to the cross path and then they go over. And so we plan on having someone there to direct kids when they get out of the car. You're coming down just like they kind of do in Styles Middle School. They stop and they literally wait, and then the, the teacher, whoever it is, then walks them across. So. That's my vision of how this would work in that like these kids, if this is here, they can get out back here, but then the expectation is to walk on this path and then cross there, similar to what they do over there. Um, as opposed to, you're right, getting out and kind of like we're playing Frogger on you know the front of the school here. Um, and so that's what we plan on doing by having um, more people here, having someone located here, someone located in this space over here to make sure that this is the place where you can cross and go over. And so we have a video um, that we plan on sending out about Monday um, with our practical students in AP to demonstrate this is where you cross and walk out. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate the clarification. And the second question is regarding um, this for ISD uh, related question for I understand that the past years we had one bus and we do two routes if we're encouraging parents and students to take more of the public transportation, the bus is provided. Are they gonna be crowded? Are we still gonna look at like one bus doing two routes or are we are we ready for increasing the fleet to um, for that demand? Sure, Dr. Grayson. <laughs> So yes, sir, our um, transportation team has already been looking at all of that to make sure that we have capacity and they have assured us that we do. But like we do with any of our bus routes, we are constantly monitoring and making adjustments. So we'll be looking at that on a daily basis. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, my name is Rachel and I'm also a resident of Stewart Crossing. Um, I can, I'm going to echo what my neighbors and other people have said, and thank you very much for your the opportunity to come and speak with you. Very thankful for Chasco doing a stellar job on what I know is a very hard project, and, and I know the, the growing pains that come along with a growing area. So I think that we're doing the very best that we can, and I do appreciate y'all. I I am going to echo what um, Jill said in regards to please making sure that as soon as possible, we can get the barrels moved on the frontage road of 183A. I do anticipate that the first few days we are gonna queue up and people are gonna get used to the opportunity to realize that there is stop traffic in that right-hand lane. And the goal is to get over as far to the right as we possibly can. But if we cannot have a rear end crash at 60 miles an hour, that would be optimal. 
Um, I'm also very appreciative to Chief Nitton for being here and, and for already answering some of my questions this afternoon. So uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, I'm also going to ask a quick question in regards to the Rouse High School. You had mentioned that y'all will be monitoring opening a, a potential lane if things start do backing up. Do y'all have someone assigned to do that? I think that's my big concern is making sure that that call is made and it's made in a timely manner so that we don't have stop traffic along with you and on right away. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Um, so, the, so really for us, the front of our campus is our priority right here because most of our people get picked up and dropped off there. And so for our parking lot attendant, you'll be out there first. Our AP will be out there with the parking lot attendant. And then um, we have talked about, um, you know, our teachers who have, you know, fourth grade conference, you know, you don't have lunch duty, you don't have morning duty, please take that time and have your assigned duty during that conference period. That's something we've also talked about. But our parking lot attendant and our AP will be out there at that time when it starts queuing up. Last year, it was literally like 2.45 when people started showing up, you know? And so, Raider can, and really, it's, it's our incoming ninth grade parents who just are used to showing up early, and that's just kind of how it is, and really trying to help them understand um, the, really the consequences of getting to our campus almost an hour early. With that being said, at first day of school, they still do that. And so, we will have increased personnel there to make sure, okay, I need you to move across and explain to our parents um, on Thursday, understand if you're stopped, we're gonna ask you to move and just try to mitigate that for everybody in those neighborhoods up there. Right, and then also, uh, just a quick little tidbit, I'm also gonna thank Andrew, who was also the crossing guard at Pleasant Hill Elementary and make sure all the littles uh, cross there as well, because I'm an elementary school parent, don't have anyone in y'all's schools yet, but. I do appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to all of us. Hi, my name is Lydia, and I'm the president of the Marbell HOA. Um, and I just wanted to uh, add to the roundabout thing. It's not just students who probably will need education on the roundabout. So when the city does open that up, it'd be really good to have um, just a kind of diagram that shows everybody. Uh, and I also wanted to thank the principals for advocating so um, so uh, hard on uh, making sure that the detour would reflect the best that's for the students and the safety of the students. Uh, my question is about the Marbella to Stewart Crossing pedestrian path. Um, I know that there's not going to be any traffic um, on that portion where we're expecting a lot of students to be crossing. Are we allowed as residents to have volunteers at first aid to make sure that the students kind of know the pathway uh, that they should be going so that they're not just going and trying to cross over to uh, the roundabout area. I don't think we necessarily stop, but I was probably trying to keep you on this. Can you answer that question? I'm sorry, I heard part of that. Chief, if you don't mind, just want to make sure that we're not putting our citizens in, in a way that might be at risk. What she's asking is, can they uh, volunteers for their own people out of Marbella to actually help the children cross traffic right there? Just to, just to show them and guide them so that they know that they need to be going through Stewart Crossing to safely get to school. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem for any parent to help the children help the children cross the street. Uh, okay. I know we're looking at crossing guards things like that. I think the main thing is actually directing the traffic is where it kind of comes into a problem. But yeah, there's anything that comes up that's what we need to know about it and see some issues like that as we kind of adjust. But no, I mean, if you need to get kids across the street, you know, I would say do it. Okay. And then on the southbound traffic to Raiders Way coming out of Marbella, is there any way to put a, um, a no, uh, something to block off traffic so that people know they cannot go that way? Are they going to be doing that? Yes, I guess you can go that. Absolutely. Great. If they're not, then file makes me make sure you follow them if they may be there.
to school. And um, I guess my question was then, and it is still now, what will we learn once the traffic study is done? And how come it wasn't done earlier? How come there was such a delay? And how will that traffic study um, help us or, or make decisions? Why are we waiting until September to start that? That's actually a very good question. Thank you very much. Uh, part of the problem is right now, I don't have any school traffic right now. Because I don't have any school traffic, I have nothing I can really analyze. I really need to get the traffic going so we can actually do the traffic counts. We can see how the traffic flows. This is an untested route for us. So we're not exactly sure how the human beings work on this. It's, it's humans can be very unique in, in the patterns and when we change patterns for them. So we have to observe them and try to figure out if there's some concerns, and then we can actually observe them as they're occurring. What this does help us with, and thank you for asking that, is that it does help us identify if there's other concerns or problems. And we can find those and we can try to mitigate or find solutions to those traffic concerns. If we need to figure out that we need an officer, an officer, an officer at a certain location, <clears throat> certain location, then by all means we'll get with Jess to have to provide an officer at that location. But yes, there's a very good question. I can't do, I can't develop the analysis without having traffic in place. Okay, okay, my second question, my next question was, um, we have um, the tolls that exit, and then we're trying to exit out, and everybody's getting blocked into these lights, right? Because we're forced to go one way, and then we're gonna have to go out, and then people are exiting the toll, and they're going fast, and then you have all of this traffic backed up. Will the toll close down a couple of, or reroute or detour some of their exits to help with these, um, this backup during school drop off and pick up. Because where I live, even though the toll is not right there, you get people exiting and all of us are sitting there waiting in a light. So it's just backing up traffic. So will there be other things looked at to help during drop off and pick up hours, I guess, to help with the traffic? Because everything's getting so backed up. Understand, I don't know if Mr. Speaker, I'm trying to see you on that. If I can have them answer this. Yeah, I'm Thank you, Tony. Yeah, uh, um, so, so, so you're you're mostly concerned with the uh, northbound exit to Crystal Falls, I'm assuming. Um, that exit won't, won't, won't be closed. Uh, but but we're we're well, um, uh, um, we'll, 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 we'll we'll be coordinating with with with, with the, the city to. In sure the, the uh, um, 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 signals at the in intersection are tweaked to, 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 to keep 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 car 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 small. That that was my only question. Is that um, my my just concern is with the safety and things getting backed up and your drivers and um, I guess how long does it take for um, the decisions to be made? Because I know last year. I emailed a lot prior to uh, school um, being out, and you know, I don't know how good that did because here we are. But anyway, um, I just appreciate your time, and uh, you know, hopefully we can all communicate and come together. But um, where and who are the people that decide once they notice? the traffic is backing up or something needs to change? Is that the police officers out there? Is that the school? Who is that? Thank you. Uh, uh, we, of course, work together as a collaborative as a, as a team. Um, sometimes the last thing those things that we don't notice. Sometimes he notices things that we don't notice. And then, of course, we have our contractor who hires all duty officers, as well as we have our own on duty officers. So we're constantly getting information and trying to reassess and assess constantly at that one time. Uh, we try not to work in a vacuum, we try to work together with our partners, and we try to come up with better solutions. Uh, it's hard for us, I know that some people say, well, can we just not shut that down and leave that, up, that lane open for 30 seconds, an hour? No, we cannot do that because we have so much more traffic backing up, and if then becomes a dominant effect. We're back to the one, it begins back to the next light, it goes back to the next light. So we have to be very careful when we try to mitigate as much as possible without causing negative effects for those All right, thank you so much. Thank you for your time.
I am a parent of Ross High School, so thank you for everything that you do. Um, my question is actually for Dr. Person. <laughs> Um, I know that we staggered our times for starting school um, to accommodate bus drivers doing a route for each level. So with that accommodation in place, um, and now we're increasing traffic in buses, and yes, we can plead to put those kids on buses, but those high school drivers are going to throw with it. And so my question is, are we adjusting route times for our high school drivers, to, I mean, for our bus drivers, to pick up our students a little bit earlier to kind of hope to counteract the targets? Oh, that is a great question, and I unfortunately do not know that answer. <laughs> so, <laughs> and our transportation team could not be here tonight, but what, can I please get with you um, and get your contact information, and I'll make sure that we get that answer back to you. And I also recognize we have a shortage of, I'm a teacher in the district, and so I recognize that we also have a shortage of drivers, so I understand it's a double-edged sword. Yes, yes. So, I was just thinking if they didn't have to do their elementary route, they might be able to jump in and start their high school route and then their middle school routes a little earlier. Yes, I do not want to misspeak on that, so I will give you an answer. Okay. Um, my other two questions, um, Really quick, so I see we're going to have the um, police officers um, stationed. I see that they're monitoring traffic. At that time, they're not going to interact with the traffic to help direct it? No, that's not so correct. They are there monitoring, that is true, but they are to assess whether or not they do need to interact. Uh, our goal, of course, is to have safe traffic that flows through, keep traffic flowing as much as possible. Can you hear me? I apologize for that. And then, of course, if needed, as needed, then they will need to step in and go if needed. We do know an officer directing at signalized intersections. Signals are there at the time. It's best and important to let the signals do what they're supposed to do. And then my last one is, heaven forbid we have an emergency during our peak times. Is there a plan in place to get personnel where they need to be without the 45 minutes? Yes, we do. Or so, I'd love to have the chief. Which one? The chief. We got several chiefs here. How they know you? Come on. It's chief whisper in the department. Thank you. Yeah, we do have a couple of different plans on how to get into both the subdivisions and to the schools in the event that there is an emergency. Uh, of course, with the police officer stage there, that would be our first attempt is for them to intervene and clear out the traffic for us to be able to get resources back there. Uh, we do have we have worked with the apartment complex. They do have emergency access to the uh, uh, right way back there, so we made arrangements to be able to access that way. And then also, for the first few days of school, we will have a unit back there uh, in the subdivision just to be pre-staged because we don't know what that's going to look like for the first couple of days. Hopefully not. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I think that was going to be my question to you, but it's great to see the preparation there. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, one was with me on the Marvel community. Like, will there be a school bus too that's going to pick up kids and it's going to take the same route as the one in Bath? Okay. Uh, the second question was around, like, uh, I think uh, my friend asked there, was um, merging of traffic that's coming out of Marvel and Stuart Cross into Woodview. Will there be an officer to help kind of merge, help with the merging, or how will that go uh, through? So, with regards to the ranch roads that you referenced to? Yes. So, I have requested our country to have an officer on standby waiting to watch to see how that works. Because if it does turn back, we do need to interact. Got it. Okay, so we'll have an officer there for the first three weeks. Okay. That's what I've requested. Thanks. <coughs> So thanks, uh, you put a lot of hard work into this, it's obvious. I just have one question that hasn't already been asked, which is that as long as we're working with AT&T, would it be possible for us to make sure we have complete coverage in the area? <laughs> it's a uh, very good question. Not necessarily in my oil house, but I can definitely <laughs> convey that to them. But, everyone, but uh, it's, it's certainly within the scope of this project to address that. And I understand that 
It's a little bit difficult for at and to build towers to get them approved to be built in the neighborhood. So I think that if powers that be um, contact at and and tell them they're willing to have those towers built, then Marbella can have complete coverage and neighbors. You know, my mother is elderly. I'm, there's parts of our house that she can't even speak to someone on the phone, and she has to get up from where she's sitting and move to the best location in our home so she can talk to her brother. It's awful. Yes, sir. I think it's a very good question. Absolutely. I think it's very important. I think that's an honor for the city to have as much coverage as possible. I do know. Robin, would you be in with me for a minute? Why did you have to answer this question? That's great. I think they all use the same towers. So. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marcel Logan with Blockhouse. Uh, I'm a mom of a junior at Rouse, and I've met several of you. Oscar, so nice to see you here. You might have talked on the phone several times. Thank you for everything you've done. I'm just going to say a couple of comments real quick. First of all, I'm going to reiterate what people have said. Thank you so much for doing this. It's amazing to see all the entities working together. It means a lot. I'm very disappointed there are not more parents here. I will do everything I can to get this communication out to my neighborhood. Uh, will the PowerPoint be available online? I know this whole presentation will be. Okay, <laughs> great, so I took some pictures. So thank you. I really do want to thank everyone. And uh, the president of the HOA, the neighborhood here, I would encourage you to reach out to your volunteers in Blockhouse, I've had people do crosswalks. They wear a vest, they have a sign, they cannot direct traffic, like the chief said, but you can make sure that those students get off their bikes and they safely cross the road. So put it on your residence. They're, they're, they're kids. They need to be a part of this. So, I mean, you guys are doing so much, the parents need to do something. One thing with RAS, you said uh, everybody show up at 325. How many cars show up for pickup? I mean, we here's here's where we're, we're running into the grounds. We are projected to be the largest high school in the district, and so um, to give you an idea, we have 380 seniors who graduated. The graduating class this year is 550, and we're going to welcome over 600 freshmen into our building. And so, don't know the exact numbers, but if we have to really push to get kids on the on the bus because if we don't, there will be a large number of students being dropped off, and that's just the point because our enrollment is is um, increasing at a pace that's faster than probably all the other high schools in the district. And so, um, luckily, Raider Camp is on Thursday, and so um, our admin team is going to spend a lot of time just a part on Raider Way construction to help our community understand this is one of the largest classes we've had. Um, in a lot of years, and so with that being said, um, coming to school before 325 is going to be a challenge. But if they don't ride their bus, then yes, we'll have a lot more numbers. I mean, we're probably at about 2,300 students uh, this year. Um, I believe we were under 22 last year, and so our enrollment has really exploded. So I understand that. Like, I guess my point is, I picked up my daughter several times last year before she was driving and I would not just show up at 325. I would actually bring my laptop and I'd show up at 3 because if I waited till 325 I was sitting on Crystal Falls and it was a big delay. So I think parents are showing up earlier so they can pick up their kids immediately and then take off. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about if you want all those parents showing up at 325 it's going to be a big cluster as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just something to consider. And then Oscar and the city of Leander, I know you guys made this, so I just want to reiterate it. The first couple of weeks, the first month, please be out there. Please watch the timing of the lights. I know you guys administer that you know, under Crystal Falls. There may be some adjustments. I know the police is going to be out there, but just please, it's, it's a continuous process, right? We're not going to get it right the first time. Communication, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much to everyone. But let's just keep trying to improve it and look out for things because number one is safety for our kids. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, and 
can I can I can I can I as a safe 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 future? Um, I I know I know I know I'm getting stuck after a signal after signal is rough. Um, don't block the box. That that that's a very safe thing. Thank 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 you thank thank you. So please 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 help 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 there as well. Thank you. Okay. Next question. Giving a little bit of a pause, seeing if there's any other questions. Nobody's making a move. Um, so first off, thank you again for coming tonight. Incredible partnership. You all have mentioned this about all of us coming together. So we just appreciate everyone that is here coming together. Because we're in this together. We've got to figure it out, right? Um, so thank you for being a part of this solution and getting your questions asked and giving us the feedback. It's been great we've had people taking notes so we make sure we're following up on these things. Um, we will be around if there's some individual conversations that you um, need to have, definitely we'll be here. We have a virtual town hall tomorrow night. Spread the word, share with your friends so that they can come and hear the same message and we can get their questions answered. Know that we're gonna really be continually monitoring this and we'll make adjustments. Key word is patience and grace, right? We're going to have that with each other. So thank you again for being here tonight. Hope you have a wonderful evening.